Hello everyone. Today we got a bit of a mundane video. How to change oil on a 94 to 96 Chevy Caprice or Buick Roadmaster or Cadillac Fleetwood. Any of the B bodies, D bodies from that era, uh, Impala SS and so on. Of course, I say this is mundane because I think there's a million oil change videos out there on YouTube. But I'm just targeting this car specifically and uh, maybe covering a few tips and tricks um, using a lift today. And yeah, let's get started. So the first thing you'll notice is I have a mark on the floor here. I originally had tape on there years ago, but it got worn off. I just hit it with a bit of spray paint. So when you have a lift, at least my setup, you know, every setup can vary, but this is a two post lift. For my setup, I put the mark on the floor because this is as far back as you can go. I can look out my window. I could, I could see where the mark is and it's as far back as you can go. Um, you can go a little bit more. There's some fudge factor built in, but if you look here, this arm needs to swing under the car. And if this tire is too far back, this arm will hit the tire and you can't get, you can't get it under the car. So the way these arms work is they just swing out. To go under the car. They mounted a pivot point here and they just swing out. So basically on a frame car like this, you need to swing the pad out and get it under the frame. That looks pretty good. I have a medium height spacer here. Every car is different, so you might need to use a short spacer or a tall spacer. Yeah, there's your different spacers. And then this part extends out and in. So I'm just gonna get it lined up with the frame. There's, with a frame, there's just some fudge factor. Same for the rear. Let's do the same for the other side. First we lift it to the frame and then check on things. <laughs> are sitting in the right spots. Yep, all four corners look good to me. Continue lifting. Hope it's not scared of heights. So that clanking noise as the car goes up, there's little ratchets in these lifts. They're safety ratchets. And that's in case the hydraulics fail, the ratchets will keep the car up in the air for you. It's a safety feature. It's a little loud on the video, I apologize. So once it's up in the air all the way, you just let it down on the ratchets. Gently. And now the hydraulics are not even holding the car. It's now the ratchets, the safety mechanisms that are holding the car. Or, yeah, brake rotor on the floor. That's just there to keep animals from pushing the, uh, yeah, the floor drain lid up here. Just give it some extra weight. I've had uh, various critters pop in this garage through there so that was my hack temporarily at least until I figure out a better way okay light and uh, just kind of look things over and you know, look for any leaks and you know, this one's got a little bit of a wet front main you know it looks like it might even be coming up higher from up higher than that 
you know, it's going to happen on these cars. I'm not too concerned about it. Next time I do the Opti, I'll replace the uh, timing cover seals and things like that. This car only has 60,000 miles, so it may take a while before I get to that, but we'll see. I'm just going to ignore that. That's fine. Check other things like, you know, is your water pump dry? No, uh, nothing weeping. No other major leaks. Check the, uh, you know, check the radiator. No major leaks there. You know, take a look at your uh, ball joints, your rotors. Anytime you're doing this kind of stuff. You know, your end links for the sway bar here. They're problematic. You got to keep an eye on those. They tend to break and rust out and the uh, rubber mounts go. These ones are fairly new. The original ones went shortly after I got the car. The rubber just blew out of them. That's common. Just replace the whole things. It's heck of a lot easier. Got brand new shocks on this. Like I said, a bill steam's on here. You know, we got a muffler here that's on its way out. That's fine. Not gonna worry about that. These are common cracks and rust out points on these cars. In fact, there's a set of aftermarket mufflers that are uh, shot. So, you know, if you drive these cars a lot, you're gonna go through mufflers. So those mufflers actually have a lifetime warranty on them. So I'll do a warranty claim and get a new set and probably put them on this car uh, when the time comes. So also got some new air shocks on this. I did those shortly after I got the car as well. The original ones were shot and I tied it into the original air system. And of course, new springs at the same time variable rate high uh high rate i believe these were a higher rate spring as the stock ones too just for extra hauling capacity i'm not afraid to use this car for hauling things from time to time it's not a trailer queen so just checking everything else you know the see any leaks around the axles or brake drums wheel cylinders are probably okay without pulling a wheel i don't know for sure but this is just a quickie inspection. I'm not doing a full inspection here. Just want to get a feel for, is there anything, any safety concerns when I change the oil? Every time I have the car up in the air and change the oil, I also like to look for safety concerns, that's all. This pipe here that seems to go nowhere, that's just a transmission vent line. It goes up to the top of the transmission. So need to make sure that's in good shape. It's not plugged up. If it gets plugged up, you'll start pushing transmission fluid out, different seals and things like that. You wanna make sure that uh, if that's leaking really bad, check your vent. This one's a little bit wet, but it's fine. Okay, another mundane topic, drain plugs. If you have a stock drain plug on your car, it's gonna be 14 millimeters. At least all the cars that I've had from the factory which are a few, uh, 9C1 cars and sedans and the station wagon and my Impel SS all had this 14 millimeter plug on it, non-magnetic. A common upgrade is to replace that plug with a magnetic drain plug. There are several sizes and options available, but I don't need to go into that. Just go to your local parts store and ask for a magnetic drain plug that has the same threads you know they can punch it into the computer these seals are the stock seals i've seen different types of these but they belong on this drain plug and that's what makes it seal against the pan so it doesn't leak oil the service manual calls for replacing these every time you change your oil and i don't blame them um, if you look at this one See if I can get a really up close shot there. There are cracks in this one. You can see 
right there, there's a crack in it. So, you know, it's not gonna, it's not gonna seal very well like that. So always change these, these drain plug seals if you still have this style drain plug. That one's pretty shot. This one's a different color. I've seen different colors of these as well. Hard to say. It was in my pile of seals, old seals. These seals used to be available as, uh, I think, a help item at Advance or your local auto parts store. Recently, I've seen this Nita brand, part number 65274. And that's for these uh, drain plug gasket. So it'll be a pack of these guys. So if you need, you know, when you do the oil change, go grab you a pack of these and use them. Or replace the whole drain plug altogether. Usually the new drain plug that has a, you know, the magnetic drain plugs come with a seal already on them. And a lot of times those seals are reusable. These ones, unfortunately, do not survive reuse very well. Let's move on. So when you have a car up on a lift, you need a device to actually drain the oil from the pan without getting splashed. So one thing I built, gosh, 20 years ago, 25 years ago was this guy. I just used an old lacquer thinner can. I bolted a flange with a oil proof gasket that looks like I made out of some sort of foam so let me open this to get to burp air out of it. Once we drain the oil, you definitely need to let it burp air. I even have a plug here to put back in there once I take that pipe out, because I can unscrew the pipe and that's so I can drain this. It fills up five gallons, can go a long way, a couple oil changes. So anyways, this is just a piece of PVC pipe. That funnel's a little small. So instead of building a new one with a bigger funnel, I might just buy buy one you know at this point in life you know back 25 years ago i had to make things but now you can just buy just about anything uh, i'm sure at least one of you are going to say why don't you just go to harbor freight and get one of these well i did i got it on sale just this weekend so. You break that loose, and I like to push in on the threads, on the plug as you unscrew it. That'll help prevent spills. And once you start hearing the threads click, you're at the end. There we go. Here she comes. If you're wondering why that drain plug looks so loose, it's because I had broke it loose. I had to pause the uh, camera and restart it. So now I like to clean this. I don't notice any, uh, any large particles on the magnet. That's the magnet right there, that black part. <laughs> should tell you right there slide this over while well I need a bigger funnel soil is about a year old but only has Two to three thousand. I don't drive this wagon every day. I drive the sedans every day.
<clears throat> okay, when it comes to oil filters, you have a bunch of options to change them, to, uh, tools I mean. So this is one of the most common tools. I obviously don't have the right size here. This is for another car, but that's one thing you can use. One thing I don't like about these is the edges on these old, on these newer ones just aren't really well defined and they will strip out these oil filters. I've moved on to just these generic pliers. You know, they work good enough. And uh, I've never had these pliers strip something out, so. I'm just gonna get this broken free with the pliers. And then once this uh, pan is done draining, because my funnel's too small. There's a joke in there somewhere. I will slide the funnel over so I can get to the filter next. All right, we're down to a drip. Wipe this off good. It looks a little bit dirty and you can even spray some brake cleaner up there clean that off really good this one looks clean i'm just going to put the drain plug back if your stock drain plug goes in any more difficult than just by hand like this i highly recommend getting a new one it should just go in by hand, just like I did there. If it's any more difficult to install, don't force it, just get a new one because somebody may have used an impact gun on it or some other ridiculous amount of torque and chewed up the threads. These do not need to be tight, fellas and fellets. You can see where I'm grabbing this. I'm grabbing it all the way down toward the end here so I get the least amount of torque. And I just let, you know, click, good enough. We're not gonna use a torque wrench on this. Now for the really fun part, the filter. I just like to let it drain. There's a lot of tricks you can do to do this quicker and less messier. Let it drip and spin it off. Now is usually a good time to change your gloves. And this is like the extra large as well. I guess my hands are too big. I'm joking there somewhere. Much better. All right, next up, let's talk oil filters. There's a ton of information online and a ton of controversy about oil filters. I'm not gonna get into all that today, but I am gonna talk about one minimum preference that I have. 
and that's the overall construction. If you look at this particular filter, this is a SuperTech. It fits these cars. Inside, you'll notice these plastic support ribs in there. I personally don't love that design. I also think the flimsy sheet metal around here is just inferior. I just don't like the way these are designed. And guess what? The AC Delco PF52E is the same. It uses the same plastic inner core ribbing. So I have stopped purchasing the AC Delcos quite a while back. The regular PF52s without the E seems to be just fine, but when they redesigned them, they made them shorter and they also added the plastic ribbing inside. The other box I have here is a purolator. And if you look in there, looky. How about that? We have metal. So I would much rather have that metal screen in there. Plastic doesn't belong in that area. There is potential for it to fall apart, you know, heat cycles and things. It just doesn't impress me. I've seen too many plastic parts over the years disintegrate in engine applications. So. I don't care what they say it's made of. Give me metal. Give me some metal any day. Also note how the filter is slightly taller. The seal is a better quality seal. And of course the metal ring, the metal support ring around here is definitely a better quality. So, you know, that alone rolls out these super techs anymore. I'm just not going to buy them anymore. <clears throat> Get yourself a purolator or a uh, Napa filter, a Napa gold filter. They're nicely designed. And of course, a Wix. Everybody talks about Wix being the greatest thing. Yeah, well, it's hard to find them at my local auto parts stores. You just can't walk in there and get a Wix as easily. You know, the, I have an advance in an auto zone near me. And unfortunately, they don't sell these, uh, the Wix. They don't sell the Wix ones. They, at least advance sells the Purolator stuff. Although, last time I was in there, it seems like they're reducing the stock of their Purolator stuff. So, I don't know anymore. Might just have to buy them online, and if so, we'll get the Wix. If I have to resort to that, there's an O'Reilly's down in about probably about 20 minutes away from me, and I got to check their inventory next. But as long as you stay away from the plastic inserts, I think you'll be fine. I'm not partial to oil brands either. What I do like to use in these cars, though, is any high mileage oil. I mean, the cars are 25 years old. Uh, there's a lot of seals that are starting to go. This is the first time I'm going to use this in this car. I've used it in all my other B bodies, and it really has helped some of the oil leaks. You know, the front seal oil leaks, the rear main seal oil leaks. It's a minor help. It's not like a major help. You're, it's not going to be a night and day difference, um, but it does seem to work. The problem is once you switch to using this, you got to pretty much stay committed. I feel like, and like I said, this is this. I'm not a chemical engineer. I'm not an oil engineer, but it feels like if you switch back and forth between the high mileage stuff and regular oil, you're probably going to develop leaks when you switch back to the regular oil because all your seal swelling additives are now going to be gone. Uh, there's apparently additives in this that are supposed to swell seals and soften them and things like that. So I don't know. Whatever. It's worked well for me. Maybe it'll work well for you. Your mileage may vary, you know, use what you're comfortable with. Up until recently though, um, I think I've just used conventional oil in this car, but I think it's time to, to, sh to switch now that I've seen that front seal weeping a little bit and we'll see how that works out. 
I'll clean some of that oil off and see if it helps cut back on it. Uh, but in the meantime, let's get this uh, oil filter pre-filled. Now what I like to do is peel back this tab. You're supposed to just rip this seal right off this style container. You know, this is the kind that has a lid on it. You're supposed to pull this pull tab and dump it. But for the filter, a little trick you could do is make a, a hole in it like that. Add yourself a little vent hole behind it. And then that'll make it a little bit easier, at least, to pour into the filter to pre-fill it for you. So let's see how much of a mess this makes. Not bad. Let this sit a moment. You'll notice it's not quite full yet. It soaks into the element, paper element in there. So let's keep going. Doesn't have to be overflowing. I just like to pre fill these cars because you, know, you don't want the engine starting dry. Okay, that should be good. Take the oil you spilled around the edges here and wipe it on your seal really well. I'm going to get this seal really well coated here. Believe me, the more oil you get on this seal, the black seal, the easier it'll be to remove the filter later. Next time you do a change. So don't be too shy with it. You just don't want it running down the edges. All right, so our seal is nice and shiny. Let's get it on the car. I also like to wipe off where the oil filter screws on, I like to wipe off the surfaces. Can you see that? Where the seal mates the oil filter adapter on the engine block. So you wipe that off good. And now you're ready to spin your oil filter on. Let's get this out of the way before I knock it off. All right, I'd like to switch over to a mechanic glove. So now that the filter's seated, just give it like three quarters of a turn past it being seated. You can even go a full turn. A little more than three quarters it feels tight enough to me we're just going to call it quits there never use an oil filter wrench to tighten these up guys and gals they will not fall off i've never had one fall off being hand tight i'm going to wipe off an area first make sure there's no oil residue
Okay, there we go. And now we're ready to refill the oil. Before we do that, we're gonna lube the chassis. I did spill some oil on this catalytic converter. Sometimes that happens, it splashes. If you don't get it off now, it's gonna stink up a storm later. So let's just get that off there. Brake cleaner will do the trick. Finally wipe off any residue on here, oil pan area, just for cleanliness. This is the grease I like to use, red and tacky. Seems to work pretty good on these cars for the ball joints and all the miscellaneous steering components. So let's get going. First step, clean off the crud from these grease fittings. And this is something you gotta do with every oil change. Don't skip this step. These are greasable. They will wear out prematurely. It's a very good idea to do, keep these well lubricated. So I usually just do one pump in the tie rod ends. And the ball joint, which is right there, I like to do too. I'll feel it out though. If it looks like it'll take more or less than two, I'll, I'll adjust. But two seems to be just right. So we're gonna quit there, two pumps. <clears throat> Let's try to move you over to Get some more of these steering linkages. One pump in each of these, maybe even less if it squirts out too much. One pump seemed to be just right for that guy. Started seeing some ooze out. this guy. Give me a one and a half. There's a bigger boot on that one. Moving right along. To the other side. about one and a half for that one because it has a, a bigger boot on it here. It can hold a little more. The factory ones seem to only take about one pump. But this is an aftermarket center link. I've replaced it once already. One pump there. This is called your idler arm. One pump here. So this is called your regular arm. This is called your drag link or center link. Inner tie rod, outer tie rod. I 
I'm talking about a pump and a half as well. I just like to go until I see these seals swell up pretty good. I don't want to blow them out, so I see them swell up, but I stop before they blow out. If your seal's already blown out, then just go until grease comes out. That's all you can do. Clean the crud off. Give this guy two pumps. Before I forget, there's another grease fitting on the top of the ball joint. It's called the upper ball joint. Make sure you grease one on each side there as well. So here's another trick. Take your finger and scoop up all this extra grease that squirted out. Yeah, like that, just to get a blob of it. And you can scoop it out from just about any place. I mean, ball joints, things like that, ooze grease out. And you come over here. And right here is the steering stop. Now, if you're ever driving one of these cars and you turn it hard to one side with the steering wheel to, to the lock, Usually when you're at the lock position, the steering knuckle is up against this, this stop here. So this is your steering knuckle and this is the stop. And you can see, let me see if I can get the light. You can see it does make contact with that. So what you wanna do is take that grease on your finger that you got and just smear this excess grease a layer on there. and a layer on the, on the bracket, just like that. Right on this edge here, on the contact edge. And what that'll do is if you've ever steered hard to one side or the other and you heard all this popping and crunching coming, if you're doing like a three-point turn or if you're doing a, a, you know, a tight radius circle with the car, and you might hit some little bumps and you hear all this crunching and popping coming from one side or the other. You can feel it in the steering wheel. It's usually because these stops are dry and when you're turned full stop to one side or full stop to the other side, it'll grind on that. So keeping them greased like this will help stop that grinding. See a little bit of excess grease here, so let's go put that on the other side. That's all you need, just a thin layer. If you do that every oil change, you should be good to go. No more noisy, tight radius turns. Here's a quick test on these tie rods. How do they feel? Are they clanking around? You know, I just shake them back and forth, twist them around. Now see, that's loose. Right there. Yep, that's very loose. Get your metric crescent wrench out. That's a joke for you guys and gals. Hardy har har. All right, give this a good tighten until she stops moving on you. You don't need to over tighten these, but it definitely shouldn't be doing that.
Well, I'll be darned if we got a strip bolt here. Didn't even over tighten that. Well, that's a tangent I didn't expect. This is why we this is why we inspect our cars. Nope, do not want. Brand new USA made 5 sixteenths with a captive nylon stop nut. Now I like to mount these with the nuts facing back, mainly because they won't get caught on things. I'd rather not have bits sticking out that can grab on things too easily. So that's why I'm gonna face these nuts back because the uh, threads stick out. That's the main reason. So we'll just do it this way and be done with it. Ah, oh, American size. See, this was a 14. I switched to a half. That's more like it. Click, proper torque. That's yeah, looking good. This side's doing the same thing, so let's uh, let's address that. By the way, that's an American-made nine six or uh, five sixteenths bolt. This one is a Chinese metric. Just saying. I don't think it's gonna strip out that easy. Not as easy as the other one did.
ain't going anywhere. I'm gonna replace them both because the other one was on the verge of stripping out too. Didn't feel right. Didn't trust it. I don't see any play in it. So I think we're good to go. I noticed it was binding. So I readjusted it so that we have more, more play like that. Another thing I like to do every once in a while is uh, you know, get some white lithium grease and uh, spray these transmission linkages here. Definitely use white lithium grease. There's a nylon insert or a plastic type insert in here. And you don't want anything reactive to plastic. This is also a pivot point here. So just a little, where am I? Just a little spray in there. So yeah, just do this occasionally about maybe once a year, once every two years, depending on how many miles you put on it. Uh, if you drive it a lot in a lot of sloppy weather, then do it more often. Finally, we're ready to lower the car. And the way these lifts work is you raise the lift a few inches to get it off the lock, the ratchet locks, you pull down on the releases. So that's one release and there's a similar one on the other side. And then you're ready to lower the ready to lower the car. All right, let's fill it up with oil. the rest of that five quart bottle. Drink up. Another favorite thing with these cars is that's all you need is one bottle. A little under a quart goes in the filter and the rest goes in the engine and it turns out to be just about right. I've noticed a lot of newer cars have varying different capacities. So one bottle doesn't always cut it.
All right, we're full. Maybe even a little over full. But I always just put the full five quarts in. It'll drop a little bit once the filter completely fills up and saturates. I did leave an air gap in it. Now you might've noticed that I overfilled it, but I've also run the car, taken it on a short trip, let it cool. So yep, don't worry about it fellas and fellettes. Full five quarts poured in, call today. All right guys, hope this was interesting. Thanks for watching.